started. Today I want to talk about the problem with indicators and how you can use indicators to absolutely destroy the markets in your trading if you know these few things. Um, so I'm going to start with about two really important problems with indicators. And um, these are really big deal. These, these problems are a really big deal. Um, and it can absolutely destroy your trading if you do not understand them. And so uh, I'm mainly talking, I mean, there's a lot of different indicators that do a lot of different things, but I'm primarily talking about your basic indicators like your MACD, your RSI, your stochastics. Um, those are all really similar and they're oscillators. And there's just so many indicators that fall into that pattern, right? And so the very first thing, problem that we have when we're talking about indicators is that they will not work if you trade them in the wrong market condition. Okay. So they will not work and they will hurt you if you trade them in the wrong market condition. So another way of saying that is that they do not determine market condition. And if they trade in the wrong market condition, if they give a signal with the wrong market condition, they will not work. Okay, so here is a euro dollar 15 minute chart. And I'm going to zoom up here. And I took a trade, an indicator trade today on this trade right here. I bought the euro dollar and I made 51 pips on the trade this morning. And that's all I need is one trade a day, if that, you know, one trade a day, one trade a week, whatever you need, you need to generate the revenue that you need. But all I needed was one trade. But here's the thing. I used my indicators to make this trade. And so what did I do to get to make that happen? Well, I, um, I, made sure that I understood my market condition. So I'm going to share with you why market conditions are so important. Okay. Why they're so important. Um, and so in this particular situation, we have, here was my entry and here was my exit. Now this was a great trade. You can see this is a 15 minute chart. So I was in 15 minutes uh 30 minutes i was only in this trade for about 30 minutes very nice now this the entry was here look you'll you'll notice that the slow rsi moved above the blue the red is the is the fast rsi i said the slow i meant R fast the fast rsi moved above the blue the blue was above the 50 and we had the green macd crossing and moving up right? And so I entered right here and I probably could have entered a little bit sooner. Uh, I could have entered in anywhere in this range and it would have been a great trade because the indicator gave me a signal here and these lines crossed over and the, the MACD was moving here. So anywhere in this area would have been a signal. Uh, and I was still able to enter here a little bit late. And so that's okay sometimes to be late as long as everything's working. And I could have got another 17 pips, but who knows how long I would have held it. I'm still happy with my 50 pips, right? Very happy. But what did I do? Well, you see this red line? You see this red line and this one? These are levels, right? And so I had identified the current market that I was in. And if you're looking at this current market, I zoomed out a little bit on a 15-minute chart. What do you notice here about this particular market? Like what can you see just by looking at this market? Well, on a 15 minute time frame, the thing that really stands out here is that this is a range market. This is a range market. And in a range market, oscillators work a certain way. But if you're looking at a trending market, they work in a different way. Okay. So, uh, what you'll notice here is that I have these levels and that levels are used to identify the range. 
And so in a range market, we've been ranging since July 19th. And I haven't zoomed back. Let me see how long this has been going. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Okay. You'll notice, uh, yeah, it hit the bottom of this range here on the 18th. Okay. So since then, it's been ranging, right? It's been ranging since the 18th. And what we'll notice is during that period, the uh, the black dot on the RS on the MACD works beautifully, right? So we got this right here. We got the red indicator, the crossover, perfect trade, right? Well, look when it's green, perfect trade. Okay. And then this one went down, right? Oh, another nice one. Okay. And now here we go. Uh, this one took a little while to develop, but right here, we have the black dot, and then it made a nice move to the downside. Okay, here we go. Right, so when I identify these markets like this, the I'm ready to take these trades all day long, right? As long as the current market conditions are in existence, right? So what happens to a lot of traders is that they're saying, okay, well, the indicator's overbought or oversold. I'm going to take the trade right? I'm going to take the trade. Um, and that will get them into a lot of trouble, right? So the first thing you need to know when you're using an indicator is that you must use the right type of market condition for the indicator. All right. So now that we can see that this is a sideways market, we can take these overbought and oversold signals. OK, very simple. Right. And now the next thing uh, we need to determine is what if it's a trending market? What if it's a trending market? What do we do? Well, I can continue to go with this same particular, um, the same situation and see if it's a trending market. What do we do? Well, right here, you can see we have more of a trending market. I'll zoom up a little bit and come back. Um, this is more of a trending market right here, right? And so in a trending market, if we sell on a peak and overextended, right here we sell, here we sell, here we sell, you can see the MACD signals are not working. Now they will give you a little, usually they'll give you a little bit, but what happens is you don't get enough and you're like, you don't hit your target and then you're in trouble. So you can see right here, false trade, false trade, false trade, false trade, false trade, false trade. So in a trending market, you're going to get bad signals on overbought and oversold. So you must, first of all, determine which market that you're in to determine your specific entries, right? So that's the very first thing. You look at it and you say, okay, what market am I in? Which is the trend? And the way that I do that is I'll use a trend line like this. You can see I just drew a trend line. If the trend line is strong, I'm not going to uh, go against it. Or also uh, you can use different moving averages. Um, you can apply a 50 period moving average. Let me add that onto the chart here. You can add a 50 period moving average, uh, 50, and add it to the chart. And that can sometimes help you see that 50 um, or even a 100 period. You can also add a 100 to get the, the trend. Uh, but I like to use the trend line and look at the current levels. If it's continuing to move, you just look at the, at the indicator if it's really strong. You know, if it's really strong and it's overbought, you don't want to get in overbought on a trending market. Instead, 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 what you want to do is you want to be patient and then buy on a pullback, right? So much rather than sell on an oversold, I would rather buy here or here on a pullback or even here. You see the red lines underneath? You see those red bars and these red arrows? Like that's an indication of a pullback. It doesn't have to turn red on the MACD, 
right? So in this particular market condition right now, we want to buy here. So here's one, and you can see the great trade, right? Great trade. This particular instance, this trade would have been uh, 150 pips, right? So you get the pull, and that's on a 15-minute chart. You get the pullback and the price, the slow RSI gets crossed over by the fast RSI. The MACD crosses over your entry somewhere around here, and there you go. And then there's another entry here, right? Another great trade. We could buy here. And, you know, as always, you want to put your stop loss below the support levels, always important. Um, and so you're, you got an entry here. And then right here, you got a pullback. You see the red lines and the arrows. And then your MACD begins to, your red, your slow RSI gets crossed over by the fast RSI and you get a continuation. There's another buy setup right here. Okay. Right. And so, and the trend is still intact. Now, once this trend breaks, the trend breaks, we enter into a sideways phase. The MACD crosses over. Now, all of a sudden, a buy might still work here. And let me go and see if it does. It might still work. Um, but it's not as strong of a trade, right? It's not as strong. And it still worked, right? So the trend line broke. It still worked. And it actually was a great trade. So in this situation, the uptrend is still intact, right? And as a matter of fact, um, I'm in a sideways market that I traded today. But I was sideways with a bullish bias because the market has been moving up, right? So yes, it's been sideways for several days, but it was a sideways entry with a bullish bias. So um, because even though the previous trend was up, right? And so I take all of those things into consideration. I look at the current market conditions. I say, what is the current conditions? Well, it's sideways. However, it's sideways with an upward movement over the last, you know, week or so. So if we go to a weekly time frame on this, you can see uh, that we've been moving up for a while, right? For 300 and some pips since last week, since uh, July 10th, we've been moving up. So we've been moving up for over almost two weeks, almost 12 days. We've been moving up. Let's look at a daily time frame. All right, let's look at daily. So daily, we've been moving up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And uh, these two days were sideways. So we have a history of up moves, right? And now I'm definitely aware of this support level on the top. Very important level. If this cut breaks, we could go head back down. But again, I'm talking specifically right now about indicators. I'm not talking about levels. I'm going to do a levels training later on very soon. All right. So now the first problem is they do not determine market condition. And if you trade the indicator in the wrong market condition, you will not be successful. So that's number one. The second part about indicators that is really, really challenging is that they do not show levels, right? So I have two problems that I've outlined here with indicators. So problem number one is that they do not um, determine the market condition. And there might be three problems. They don't determine the market condition. If you get the market condition wrong, you're going to lose. And then the third problem is that they don't do levels, right? So um, that's why you really need to go back and identify your levels before you trade every day. Make sure you identify your support and resistance levels. Those are super important. Um, and they're going to help you with your trade management. They're going to help you with your entries. If you have levels drawn, like, you know, I have a level here and one here, and I'm just like, okay, if it goes below this level, I'm not interested in the trade anymore, and I'm just going to get out of the trade, right? I'm just going to get out of the trade. If I'm going long on this and I'm coming up into this area, well, hey, maybe it's time to take my profit, uh, and I need to get out of the trade, right? But again, indicators may show you something. You know, they may show an overbought, or an oversold condition, 
but they're not going to tell you when the market is going to turn because of levels, right? So an example of this would be um, if the market here was uh, crossing over, you're seeing a cross. Let's, I'm just using this as an example, and I could probably find a ton of these if I go back and look. But if you, if you go here and this is crossing and it's crossing right into a level, well, then you're going to be very uh, at a major disadvantage because if you're trading an indicator cross at a support level, if you're selling an indicator cross on a support level, that is going to be a very difficult trade to win. Okay, so... Um, if you're doing an indicator cross and then it's broken the level, that is a great way to do it. But really, it's important that we use levels on every single one of our trades. So you just want to go through and I'll show you real quick how to do it. And I'm going to do an in-depth training on levels later. If that's of interest to you, let me know. Um, but what I'm really thinking here is you just draw the tops and the bottoms, right? So here is a top, you just draw a line. Here's the bottoms, here's the bottom, here's a bottom, here's a bottom, we draw it, here's a top, 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 and right now we have a triple top. And uh, you know, you wanted to look at trend line levels too, we've got a little flag developing here, right? So you can always do that. And I, you know, I also love the, um, you know, things like megaphone patterns, really important to look at. So let me show you, like right now we're, we're in this channel, uh, but if we draw like a megaphone pattern, you can see we have a trend line going this way. So right there, it's going to have trouble at the top of this blue line. Um, you know, we have a megaphone pattern, right? So we have that going that way, and then we have this one going this way, right? So, you know, those levels are going to really stop your trade. So if we come down here and it looks like it's a nice crossover, to the downside, well, maybe we want to be very careful about taking that trade. Um, on this one, where it crossed over, it was still right at the top, right? It was right at the top as it crossed right here, and it had a lot of room to the downside. So if this goes sideways for a while and the indicator starts to lose momentum, well, then I would definitely consider taking a short down to the bottom down here, right? I would definitely consider that. And especially when I look at a higher time frame, Right, a higher time frame showing that we have resistance right up here, and um, you know that resistance could roll over, and we could start another leg to the downside. I'm st I'm still thinking that we could have another leg. I don't know, but right now today's trading, I was just going for a short trade. I'm going to take that. Now, uh, one other thing to to mention about this is that you know, as always, your risk management is really critical. Your consistency is critical. Your, your trade management is so important. You can get this stuff down really well. But if you don't manage your trade properly, you're going to be in trouble, right? And I'm just using that because I have to say that all the time, right? I have to say that there's no magic in formula. There's no magic indicator. It all requires you being consistent and following your trades. If you have one good week and then you decide that you're going to uh, have a bad week and you know not follow your rules and end up losing all the money you made in the good week, then you've just undone everything. So you've got to keep your losses really small. It's important to keep those losses very small um, all the time. So the next part of what I'm going to talk about, which I've already kind of laid the foundation here, but I'm just going to lay it out into a four-step process, right? And that four-step process is this, how to trade with indicators. So if you're writing it down, the notes should say how to trade for indicators, a four-step process. So uh, step number one is identify the trend, right? So in this case, this is a daily chart. We're identifying the trend. And so this is a little different because we're looking at a daily, but right now you see we've got the MACD, we've got the crossover, but we've got a strong downtrend. So we know in a downtrend, we want to take the black dot on a sell, right? On an uptrend, we want to take the black dot on a buy, but when you're in a downtrend, you can still trade it, but I prefer to try to stick with 
the trend because sometimes those black dots will just keep on dotting and they won't work. It's much better to trade with the trend, right? So step number one is identify the trend. Step number two is identify the current market condition, right? So sometimes you're in a trend, but it's moving the opposite direction. So you want to be aware of your current market condition. Is it a trend? And it's like right now, this is a trend, but we're moving up. It's a big downtrend, but current price is moving up. So you need to, and actually we're actually sideways. So am I going to trade a counter trend trade, even though uh, we're moving down, am I going to buy? Yes, because it's a sideways market right now and it's actually moving up. So I need to be aware of the big picture. So step number one is identify the trend, which is big picture. Step number two is identify the current market condition. Is it going reversing? In this case, it's reversing and it's stalling and going sideways. So if we break this, we're probably going to hit up here. We've got this moving average. We've got this, right? And so how do we enter this trade? Well, we go to a lower time frame. We wait for a level to break. We wait for the indicator and we make it happen, okay? So then step number three. So step one was the trend. Step number two is the current market condition. And then step number three is to use levels, right? You want to use levels. And so uh, levels are really important. Levels are critical, right? They're critical. So you just draw your levels here. And, you know, the way I like to do it is on weekly, daily charts. You know, you can go to the weekly levels. Weeklies are really strong. And some people like to color code them. You know, they're going to put weekly levels you know, every close of the candle is a really important level on a weekly. So, you know, really important. You want to go two or three levels deep. I've got two up and two down, right? And so I now have those levels. And then you go to a daily and you can go to an hourly and do different levels. And the, the higher the time frame, the better the level. Um, really important, right? So step number one is to find your trend. Step number two is to get the correct market condition. And then step number three is to get the levels. And then the last step, step number four, is to use the indicator for your entry. And how do you do that? Well, you determine, are you going to do a black dot entry? In this case, I'm not going to do it because it's counter trend. So what am I waiting for in this situation? I might wait for it to come back up here. It might take some time. It's a daily chart. And when it finally makes the move, it comes back. We get a dot. We then see the cross. Like I like to see the, the, the moving averages cross too. So there are real three, three signals on the indicator, right? Uh, the MACD. So number one is the black dot, right? Black dot, okay? Number two is the moving average cross. And I did a really good webinar on the MACD not too long ago. Um, I could send you guys a link on that too. I just, you got some, when you're doing this stuff, there's so many things that we're putting together. Like I would like to go in a deep training just on the MACD or a deep training just on the levels. And here we're just talking about indicators in general, but this is a really good overview. But even so, I'm talking about indicators and how to trade indicators. But even when I did my indicator training on the MACD, I really went into depth and told you, exactly how to trade that MACD. And um, we'll include the link for that because it was, I got really good feedback on it. So sorry for the side note, but again, the black dot, the moving average cross, um, and then there's the arrows, right? The green arrows. And then the last one is the crossover, right? The crossover. So there's a lot of different ways that you can enter on your MACD. But again, what I really... If you've got to have the trend, the market condition, the levels, and then you have all these different signals. And then the confirmation signal obviously is the, the slow RSI crossing or the fast RSI crossing the slow RSI when that happens. And uh, for a buy, we're also looking for the RSI to be above 50. So in that case, uh, there's still no buy signal here. There's still no buy signal on this. Uh, we do have a black dot, not going to trade it. Uh, because there's the RSI wasn't there. Now we have the black dot. We have the RSI. Not going to trade it because these lines haven't crossed. Um, we also have um, 
the RSI is not above the 50, so I'm not going to trade it. And we have this key level, so I'm not going to trade that because this could easily reverse. So I'm getting all of these things that are stopping me from taking the trade, right? And that will be a little frustrating for some traders that want to trade and they want to trade yesterday, right? But look, if we're patient and we wait for all the signals to develop, we've got the level here. You see how this level was so critical? It tested the level and it went, right? That level broke. We've got the black dot. We've got the cross. We've got the trend. And then when it finally traded, wow, what a trade, right? What a trade. It actually went a good distance. We had the signal here and uh, the trade went, you know, 600 pips. You can be patient. You can be really patient in your entries if you can get a 600 pip trade. Now, if you're not that kind of a trader, that's okay, because now while you're aware of, you still have to understand this stuff. Even if you're not this kind of trader, you still have to understand this stuff because while it's moving here, there's lots of signals in here. There's signals all over the place. You can take 50 trades in here if on little tiny pullbacks, little tiny pullbacks. And every day you got a winning trade and your win rate's good, your risk to reward ratio is good. Everything's good because you're following the system, which the indicator trading system, which is number one is the trend. Number two is your market condition. Number three is your levels. And then number four is you use the indicator to take the entry. Okay. And so with that type of a setup and that type of a system, you really, 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 really can be a successful trader. Um, then again, another set, another uh, topic I'm going to discuss another day is self-control and following your plan. I think uh, in trading, we are our own worst enemy. Once we understand this and we really get a feel for this, then we need to really say, okay, do I understand the trading or am I just not following my self-discipline, right? So it doesn't do you any good to have self-discipline if you can't understand the system, right? You got to get the self-discipline, but you've also got to understand the system because if you're taking the trades in the wrong spot, you're not going to make a good revenue with your trading. So, uh, you know, if you enjoyed today's training, I would love some good feedback. If you enjoyed this I would really appreciate it if you would let me know. Really appreciate it uh, for all of the feedback that I do get and the comments and questions and all of that. Uh, uh, that's going to conclude today's training. But I really hope that you will share and give some feedback um, and give me an idea of what you want to see in the future. Uh, so I really appreciate it. And thank you all so much.